Okay, so I'm extremely sorry. On the day one, I uh, I was confused. I was not confused. I misunderstood the syllabus, and I didn't check on UGC website. So I thought that was the new syllabus. So it was just a misunderstanding. I'm sorry for that. It's okay, ma'am. Yes, this is the syllabus. Everything is whatever we have studied till yet. Everything is just all right, and you don't you didn't study anything extra or anything unnecessary. So don't need to worry. And please do not hesitate in the class if you uh, if you feel that something is wrong, then please tell me. We all are in our learning phase here. So this is applications of yoga. This is the syllabus. This is the correct syllabus. Applied philosophy. So this part, this philosophical part, this is in our syllabus, but uh, we do not need to separately cover it in unit number nine. Uh, you yoga is applied philosophy, meaning a definition, nature of consciousness, as described in Vedas, Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, Yoga Sutra, Yoga Vashisht, spiritual and scientific approach to human consciousness, yogic method of evaluation of human consciousness, Bhakti Yoga, Jnana Yoga. Karma Yoga, Mantra Yoga, Shtang Yoga, Hati Yoga. So all this philosophical part, we don't need to separate, cover it separately. Then the next, which we are covering is this part. Yoga in education, features of yoga education, factors of yoga education, teacher, student and teaching, value-based education. This we will cover tomorrow meaning and definition types of values and teaching methodology in yoga teaching and learning concepts and relationship between the two principles of teaching meaning and scope of teaching methods and factors influencing them teaching techniques individual group and mass we have covered all this essential of good lesson plan this we will cover in last chapter concepts needs planning of teaching yoga and uh, models of lesson plan this is also in eighth chapter need for a lesson plan and content plan eight step method of introduction as developed in kevalya dhama evaluation methods of an ideal yoga class methods of customizing yoga class to meet individual needs the student will have the demonstration and training in the above mentioned aspect of teaching methods the yoga classroom so we, this we will do to, today yoga classroom students approach to teacher this we have already covered this so this is the syllabus after that what we studied in the previous class. Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Uh, last class we completed that uh, projected me sorry. Uh, basic method of teaching. Uh, three methods. Uh, that before class uh, left and we had completed and four chapter also source of teaching methods that is yogi principles and psychological principles and uh, anatomic uh, physiological principles we had complete okay so today we have to start from educational principles
for uh, these three principles we have completed yogic psychological and anatomical physiological now today we will do educational and sociological principles learning depends upon impressions received by the necessary receptors therefore the presentation of a specific practice of skill should involve as many senses as possible to form an adequate image of the practice for any motor skill for example you are driving a car you are driving a car you are learning to drive a car or anything uh, for example you are learning to drive a bike and if uh, if you can't see a bike or you can't touch that bike then you won't be able to learn how to ride a bike so this in the same way as many as senses are involved in the uh, learning process then uh, more easily you will be and more effectively you will be you will be able to learn so uh, this is given many senses a uh, specific practice of skill should involve as many as man as uh, involve as many senses as possible to form an adequate image of the practice so if you more and more senses are involved then it forms an image of what you have to do next point is motor learning is perceptual cognitive rational and involves mental as well as physical aspects of learning so motor learning like yoga or any other activity it not only involves physical aspects but also involves mental aspects like perception how we interpret and understand things that we uh, that we receive through our the information that we receive through our senses and uh, and uh, other mental processes like thinking cognition so uh, this point means that motor learning skill not only uh, is not only involving physical aspects but also mental aspects so you a t yoga teacher should keep in mind while teaching this this point next point is there are individual differences there are individual differences in effectively using various kinds of sensory information so what does this point tells that people are different in how they use their senses to understand things like some people are really good at quickly understanding the information they see like uh, reading a book or looking at a diagram so they easily understand this way they can organize the information what in their minds when they see something very fast while others uh, might take a bit more time to process what they see because uh, some people uh, prefer to think deeply about something when they see something they first analyze in the, them and for the first analyze and then respond so uh, it's just how our brain works and everyone is different so we should keep this thing in mind that everyone have uh, individuals have individual differences next point is brief clear descriptions of the activity with repeated demonstrations brief brief clear descriptions of the activity with repeated demonstration and pointing out likely faults bring good results so the uh, description should be brief and clear and demonstration should be repeated 
and after that in the next point at the preliminary stage over learning through repeated practice is necessary so when someone is a beginner and they then they should uh, repeat it again and again so that uh, the practice gets into their mind and the emphasis should be aiming on uh, aiming at right or correct practice this can be done by specific instruction and now uh, the correct practice should be there because if someone is doing initially any practice or if they do it wrong then they they will have to unlearn it later which will be difficult so the practice should be correct initially this can be done by specific instruction instructions may be divided into those offer so instructions can be given before demonstration or while demonstrating or after the demonstration also formal instructions are best suited very important this line formal instructions are best suited during the initial phase of the learning process initial instructions prevent the student from adopting incorrect habits that might later have to be unlearned students should be instructed in the positive way of performing the activity so when someone uh, a student who is new then they should be instructed what to do and not what to avoid but it would be best if we do both of the things together we tell them what to do and also tell them what to avoid this is given in this point after that this helps in learning the activity by eliminating possible errors as well as increasing such positive aspects as ease comfort efficiency lowering of tension during performance as speed in some respects so after this next point in next point it is given that advocate time should be allotted for actual practice without which learning cannot be effective so once we tell them how to do or we demonstrate them we should give them the time for practice so wh when they do it on their own they learn better and uh, that should be informal practice when they do it on their own it is informal practice next point in next point principle of progression is given so let's understand what's the principle of progression according to this principle according to this principle when uh, we gradually increase the complexity or difficulty level of any activity like initially uh, the demonstrations that teacher shows can be simple and uh, uh, he can show the basic techniques then as learners start to grasp uh, grasp the basics and fundamentals of uh, the of the practice then you can gradually introduce more advanced variations this is given in this uh, this is the principle of progression and uh, no need to uh, cram all this you can just read this this is the main thing that i told and in principle of progression first we learn simple things simple to complex known to unknown then in the next point effective learning takes place through the use of whole method so these are three methods whole method part me part method and combination of whole and part method now let's understand what are these whole method part method and combination of whole part method so in whole method for example for example you are a yoga teacher and you have to teach surya namaskar then what you do you teach surya namaskar into parts 
uh, first uh, you in parts like you teach one asana then other asana then other asana then other asana in this way you divide it into parts and then you uh, in this way you teach that so uh, when uh, while you are using this whole method sorry 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 i was uh, i was telling about part method first let's tell about whole method whole method is what in which you uh, when the when there is any practice which is easy either it is easy or the students are mature enough to understand that practice for example if uh, all the students in the class know the surya namaskar so what teacher will do teacher will teach it in a, as a whole surya namaskar teacher will demonstrate it and teach them in one go so this is whole method and the important point point in this is that when the activity that to be learned is not complex then we use whole method and the learners are mature mature learners then we use whole method and when we use when do we use part method we use part method when activity is complex and students are immature so this uh, in part method we divide the teacher will teach one uh, one asana then another then another then the whole surya namaskar then after part method progressive part method progressive part method means it's the combination of both progressive part method is the combination of both whole and part methods in uh, what we do in this method that uh, first first uh, you learn individual parts and then pair those parts together and then practice parts as a whole for example first you learn th th all the parts of surya namaskar then you learn it as a whole or or we can take an other example also like uh, there is let's take an example of any other challenging yoga pose like bakasana so uh, in bakasana you can start by breaking the basic elements first such as first you focus on core strengthening and then practice wrist stability and after that you master squatting position for bakasana after once you feel comfortable once the students feel comfortable with all this then after that you introduce them to the next part like focusing the shift on uh, if you are talking about uh, bakasana then uh, you tell them the next part to lift lift the feet off and uh, and then the next part and then you teach them the whole bakasana so is this clear this part method whole method combination of whole part method yes ma'am you are clear progressive part method can you just explain it again thoda sa okay 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 in progressive part method it is the combination of both whole method and part method if uh, you understand from the example of surya namaskar for what in whole method what we were doing we are teaching completely the whole in one go and in part method we were teaching it into parts vanasana then after completing that uh, after teaching that vanasana you teach the next asana in this way in parts but in progressive part method what you do in progressive part method you uh, first teach one asana then other then other then you teach it as a whole in one go so we are using both whole and part method in progressive part method is this clear yes ma'am okay or if you have any problem in principle of progression In whole method, how we will do, madam? That in whole method, teacher teaches the whole practice. Do an example. Then we will understand. Yeah, as I gave the example of Surya Namaskar, you are not breaking Surya Namaskar into parts. You are just uh, 
uh, teaching it in one go you are demonstrating it in one go you are not taking any you are not dividing it into pa parts in a flow you are doing okay ji got it okay got it after this next next point is the teacher's interest and attitude towards the students determine to a great extent advocate learning teacher's interest and attitude towards the student determines a great extent of advocate learning there is a need on the part of the teacher to inspire the student to accurate and satisfactory performance if the student is not performing correctly he should be shown the points where he or she makes a mistake in a positive way that encourages self correction so we uh, uh, in this point a teacher should encourage students uh, if they are not doing for their self practice also and for their self correction also for their self correction and if they are uh, if student is not performing correctly he should be shown the points where he or she is doing wrong learning does not take place unless there is some way for the performer to assess his or her relative success or failure so when we we have we can measure something for example you have to lose weight this is your goal and then you do not have anything to measure you do not have a weighing machine or uh, you can't see yourself in the mirror then you won't be that much motivated and you you won't uh, you won't be that much encouraged so uh, if you have something to assess then you uh, get that that oh yes i can i am doing improvement so assessment is also important although it is necessary to correct faulty performance attempt performance correction and confuse students with get confused if we do all the corrections so many corrections at one time the teacher should correct the most important faults first so uh, the corrections which needed to be correct first only those should be pointed out first most correction should be in the form of positive suggestions then the eighth point is immediately after the ideal demonstration of the activity the opportunity to try out and practice the activity should be provided for the students so so they should be provided the opportunity to practice on their own and next point the teacher should encourage students to ask any question and uh, teacher should uh, encourage students and if someone ask any uh, question which uh, with then uh, a teacher should not discourage them that you have asked such a stupid question uh, teacher should never discourage students he should encourage students to ask question this is given in this point after this uh, give a suitable answer to this to his satisfaction or use the question or use the question to and op to open a discussion in the class as a whole if necessary either give them the answer or you can also choose to open as a discussion you can also uh, use that question as an uh, as a discussion in the class openly then after this do you have any problem in educational principle no ma'am okay then sociological principle this principle says that yoga is not just a physical activity involved in earning a living alone but 
it helps the person to live happily and successfully that that are not of any immediate vocational significance so this uh, principle says that yoga is not only for uh, career related or to just earn money but also it is providing some value in others life like it is giving uh, yoga practice are certainly of immediate practical use for a person of any age and sex in maintaining good health and physical fitness together with happiness in life so this principle says that yoga is not just for career related it is also providing value in other people's life like it's giving them health their physically it's making them physically fit mentally good and giving happiness in their life so we should also keep this principle in mind okay yes ma'am after this this is our fifth chapter class management in this chapter we will cover four group of participants beginner advanced school children general attention group techniques to deal with difficult students setting arrangement instructions and discussion in the last so in this chapter we will know about everything about class management students rarely cause trouble when they are interested and when suitable lesson content is presented in a competent and stimulating fashion so if students are interested to learn then they won't cause any trouble in the class one essential thing in reducing the problem of control to a minimum is to create an atmosphere of natural freedom friendliness mutual help and understanding and all these qualities these qualities these should emanate from leadership of the teacher remember these natural freedom friendliness mutual help and understanding these qualities oh, okay this develops social consciousness in students and awareness of their responsibility to the group and after this these are the four categories of yoga participants beginners experienced or advanced school children and special attention group so beginners are these can be of any age group males females children young but uh, these are the one who are who uh, who are joining the yoga class for the first time and they are not familiar with all this yoga thing and they are doing it for the first time so um, children and special individual who are making their first acquaintance with yoga they need a general background of yoga discipline and motivation to continue with yoga so what's the characteristic of these beginner group that they need gen, uh, they they need motivation to continue with yoga so we should teach them in such a way that they continue their practice next group is experienced or advanced group this group may consist of person who have some experience with yoga and wish to advance their further to gain more varied and deeper experience they all they already have learned the basics and now they want to go more, like they want to learn more deeper aspects of yoga like subtler meditation and all these deeper aspects they are with greater number of yogic practices they want to learn more and more yogic practices and indulge in subtler and higher practices intensively then next group is school children 
this is a select group madam your voice is breaking same okay just a minute Is it clear now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. So we were on school children. These are the group ranging age group of uh, age group ranging from eight to six to eighteen years. Commands largest percentage of the society. and school children need exposure to the field of yoga based on their immediate needs of their age and temperament so what are their needs needs and requirements at their that age they need yoga based on that special attention group these individuals carry can vary on the basis of age like ch children and adult so special attention group can be children or adults or old age all days it people or or based on the gender males or female like pregnant women's women can also be included in special attention group then on the basis of health problems people they have any abnormality or handicaps all these individual need special attention which is possible in a homogeneous group so homogeneous in homogeneous group if uh, uh, if they the group should be homogeneous and not heterogeneous for special attention group people now the next is dealing with difficult students so you tell what if you are in a class then what will you do if someone is disturbing the class Maybe I will. Yes, yes, sure. Shakshi ji, please. I will ask him to get out of my class. Okay, and if you ask him get out of the class, then can there be some better way? I will say stand up and explain. Okay, this is also good. Good thing and more. Anyone more? Maybe, ma'am. Mm, uh, I will make him understand that. I mean, I will try to make him understand that to speak quiet and mm. listen. Yes. What I'm saying, yeah, learn things. okay or maybe are... i'll talk to him personally if 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 the person is disturbing continuously daily then sometimes i'll talk to him to him or her personally that don't do that or tell him the pros and cons of his disturbance maybe okay. asking the questions also works ma yes it works right okay let's see what's given in the book the following techniques are useful in dealing with inattentive talkative or difficult students individual students who are disturbing the class may have their attention 
may have their attention uh, directed by pausing during the instruction glancing in the direction of the particular student and calling his or her name and asking a question so first you just pause and look in the direction in which the teach uh, in uh, in which that student is and then call out call his name then ask a question and if the st student is disturbing or uh, if or if the disturbance is troubling the rest of the class it should also be pointed out and you should tell the student that you are disturbing the class that they are preventing others who are paying attention and working well from hearing the instruction alternatively alternatively the class can be switched to any other activity if you if you feel that the students are not interested in the topic that you are teaching right now then you can also switch it to some other activity then it may help to separate people who talk perpetually but if these student continue to cause disturbance after a few warnings they should be sent out of the class as sakshi ji as Yes, you told that they should be asked, uh, they should be sent out of the class for a short period of time, and then call them back. Because once you when you call them back, then it gives them a, that it, then when you calls them back, then uh, it makes them feel that better behavior from them is expected. Madam, is it works nowadays? Mm, maybe not. Because what happened? Na, I have seen some students. Uh, if they are not completing homework and all, if the teacher sent out means they started to wondering in the market. This After that, uh, that, that <laughs> teacher stopped him uh, sending the out. Very this I have true. seen, madam. Right, Karthik ji. This happened. In my school, ma'am, teacher will use... Best example only, me only, madam. <laughs> <laughs> In high school. We all... I Even in my school also, I have seen this thing that when teacher used to send the students out, then they just they just go anywhere they want to go saksi ji you are some saying something yeah ma'am in my school teacher were used to ask a student to stand in front of the wall in classroom only by facing the wall hmm. stand there like yeah yes that can also be a good way to teach them lesson And then next we see, in addition, the teacher will have more control if he or she avoids being too familiar with older students. If some uh, teacher knows some students who are old and teacher have good bond with the, those students, then teacher should avoid being too friendly with them. Uh, no doubt teacher should be friendly with the students but not too much friendly. Teacher should maintain his or her dignity and social distance. Remember that you are a teacher. Also, never allow yourself to become antagonist towards a student. Uh, your effectiveness in helping him will depend upon your patience and understanding. So, uh, you saw you should not just become an enemy of any student or be polite and be patient and try to understand that student after this sitting arrangement this topic very important topic 
the organization of the class may have any suitable form of sitting either in lines rows semi circle or small circle okay before starting this topic you tell me that you are a yoga instructor or teacher and you you have to arrange the sitting arrangement of the class how will you arrange that where will be the students where will be the teacher how will you arrange all this ma'am may i yes please in my college when uh, uh, my teacher we used to teach us so when we sometimes the there were times when only 10 to 12 students or 8 to 10 students came then they he used to make us sit in a semi circle uh, and if uh, students are uh, like 20 to 25 30 then he used to uh, ask to make a row single row sometimes double row yeah yes very correct and first it depends upon space madam how much we have there should be a space the, in the class if the short space is there means how can we teach and if the big space is there means how can we teach? there should be no number no, first yes yes there but uh, there should be enough space in the class this is a important point also there should be enough space okay. as you can see uh, as you can see in the picture that in all of these three pictures the teacher is clearly visible to the students and students can clearly see the uh, teacher in all of these three pictures now consider that each student needs about important 40 square feet and arrange your room accordingly so how much space a student one student need 40 square feet 40 square feet and the seat of the teacher should be such that teacher is visible to every student if the group is large a platform is necessary uh, for the teacher and next it is preferable if the floor is covered with a carpet but if this is not possible the floor should be clean and each stu student should use his own mat in either case it is desirable that the mat or carpet is covered by a clean sheet of cloth of 6 feet into 3 feet the length should be 6 feet and breadth should be Three feet. After this, these are also the sitting arrangements. You can see in the picture. This is for small group in semi circle. Very important in a small group. A semi circle is more suitable as it allows every student to see the teacher clearly. when a platform is used a revolving one is ideal so while using a platform if a, a revolving uh, platform is good because a teacher can demonstrate uh, demonstrate the asanas in with different different angles students can see if the platform is revolved is revolving Uh, the whole room where the class is conducted should be well ventilated it should be well well ventilated teacher should be well lit so that not only is the class able to see the teacher but the teacher should have a clear view of the class when he is teaching from the platform and while moving about for teaching and answering questions the practice room or hall should be as quiet as possible and free from any disturbance so this is how the environment the atmosphere of the class should be anybody have any problem in class no no sitting arrangement okay then next instructions 
instructions can be given before demonstration during the demonstration while you are practicing teacher can give during the practice or after the practice uh, after the practice for what for correcting or giving more information about what you have practiced then initial stage instructions how the instruction should be to the students who are in the initial stage of their learning formal instructions we have uh, studied about this before prevent students from adopting incorrect habits during the initial stage then after instructions these are the following guidelines that can help teacher to convey instructions clearly be sure that you have the attention of everyone in the class before any instructions are given if students are not uh, focusing on the teacher and teacher is just giving the instructions then that will be of no use when a long explanation is needed it is best to have the class sit down and if necessary closer to the teacher make your make your instructions brief perfectly make your instructions brief perfectly clear and spoken slowly and distinctly so if you give a long instructions at a time then it will confuse the students and while practicing yoga students the practitioners have other things to do also like they they are focusing on their breath on their they are observing the body and uh, all the movements and all these things so the instruction should be clear brief not Uh, it should not be long the instruction should be given only one thing at a time the instruction should be given only uh, one thing at a time and then try to use different words and expressions to catch the attention of the students for example if students do not understand the first time use different words in repeating the instruction for example uh, for example initially uh, you are teaching warrior two pose you are teaching this pose and then you give instructions that extend your arms parallel to the floor and uh, with your bend your front knee at 90 degree angle and gaze over your front fingertip so some students what will happen that st some students can't grasp this wording so uh, use different wording if so uh, some student if you see that some students are confused then use alternative wording you can you can say that stretch your arms out wide like wings and bend your knees deeply as if you are sitting into a chair and look forward uh, towards your front hand as if you are aiming an arrow so you, uh, you can use different wordings after this next point is describe the technique and procedure of any activity before the student are actually asked to practice so this will help them understand it more better way these are the instruction then after this uh, in the end we do discussion in the end of lesson why do we do discussion to evaluate the outcome and remove any difficulty so discussion is also an important part of a yoga class uh, a teacher should also know uh, teacher should also know that uh, if students are having any difficulty in learning then a discussion is important these are the points first encourage the students to ask their questions or address their comments to the group discussion never discourage or ridicule any student's question or contribution whatever small it may be third point try to draw all students into discussion rather than a few who are already always ready to talk so some students are like uh, uh, some are more of extrovert type so may they they may try to dominate that 
discussion all the conversation and some are like who are not uh, so uh, so much open so teacher should uh, also focus on uh, those students who are not much open to the class into the class it is wise to limit the discussion to a few important points uh, so teacher should uh, limit the discussion to the important points because if, uh, if the discussion goes uh, discussion can go in some other direction and the important points might be missed the teacher next point the teacher is expected to know more than the students on the points of discussion but if a teacher do not know something then uh, if the teacher do not know something then he can say that i will answer you this in the next class teacher should not hesitate a good teacher should never hesitate a good teacher never hesitate while saying so and should say that he will find out answer and explain that at the next meeting after that remember that young children young children are not mature enough to participate in a group discussion so a different approach is necessary in encouraging them to share their experience so the students who are immature like young children they should be encouraged to uh, take part in the discussion to share what they feel exercise some control over the time spent on questions steer the discussion to important and relevant question do not sacrifice valuable time on those points that are not important and then next an extra point uh, extra class practice should be encouraged so teachers sh uh, should encourage students for their extra class practice because extra class practice is very necessary if students are just learning in the class and that's it then it's not gonna uh, they, they're not gonna learn in a more improved way if they are not doing their self practice at their home so a teacher should encourage them that they do their practice at their home and teacher should uh, encourage them by that uh, teacher is there for to help them if they need any help or they have any doubts in the uh, in the in their self practice they can ask this is our fifth chapter. Do you have any question in fifth chapter? No, ma'am. Okay, just five more minutes. We will cover the next chapter. After the sixth chapter, then we will uh, we can cover our syllabus in the next class. If you say we can cover this chapter today i'm okay with it ma'am ask everyone else okay what others say okay ma'am okay thank you so in this chapter we will study these three things different uh, the teaching aids in yoga and its importance different types of teaching aids advantages of teaching aids and principles of selecting teaching aids so what do you think why we use teaching aids in yoga how teaching aids help in teaching teaching aids mean man means props yes not uh, yes props can be included but uh, in this we are talking about not uh, we are talking about other audio visual type of aids props are different thing okay so yeah okay, in audio visual like... will be like having uh, the projector kind of thing yes yes digital boards together yes Probes help and sound in, system. Uh, yes. Let's see. First, we see what are the advantages of teaching aids. 
the powerful ma'am your voice is breaking voice is breaking ma'am is it breaking hello yes ma'am yes ma'am breaking acha speak speak for a while ma'am okay then we will cover this tomorrow no problem okay okay ma'am is it okay now is it okay now yeah right now it is okay sometimes it is breaking okay if it breaks then we will um, we will do tomorrow if it, it it's okay then we will continue if it breaks now tell me okay okay the aids are the powerful means starter and motivator to understand and learn the subject matter so aids are means aids are not the goal these are the means through which we a teacher teaches a learner learns the lesson quickly and effectively it keeps the students busy and they start thinking the knowledge imparted through this media remains for a longer time because uh, just remember one thing uh, that in teaching aids that you are engaging more and more senses while uh, while you have teaching aids so when you engage more and more senses the uh, learning becomes more better and more effective you rem remember thing for a longer period of time so all these points are based on this thing the desired objective of the lesson is quickly fulfilled it gives the teacher a better opportunity of conveying meaning what the teacher wants to convey teacher can convey better with the help of aids these are the advantages after advantages principles of selecting teaching aids teacher should be familiar with the aid If the teacher is not familiar then how he will use the aids too much use of aids in a class uh, situation can be avoided it's same as we studied in the instruction that too much instructions at a time should be avoided in the same way if we we use too much aids in the class then it will create confusion the aid should be prepared in advance and checked truly before being used next it should be used when the students are ready to receive it and if they they are not focused towards the teacher and teacher uh, like we same studied in the instruction point so it's the same uh, when when teacher are when teacher uh, when students are ready to receive it then show them the use the aids it should be used timely and should be accurate and technically excellent they should be presented sequentially uh presenting aids sequentially means organizing and delivering them in a structured order and uh, next it should not cost much next teaching aids are motivators very important point teaching aids are motivators but they cannot replace teachers why they cannot replace teacher because uh, uh they cannot replace the ir human connection emotional support and guidance interaction and understanding that a teacher provides different types of teaching aids next different type of teaching aids so uh, here this touch modality is not actually a type of teaching aid but we can use touch modality for teaching this is not particularly included in the types of aids so these are the types of aid audio visual and audio visual audio loud speakers visual what we see pictures seeing is believing you uh, when you, you see something you learn it more effectively audio visual tv video etc then these are the various aids that are used in teaching blackboard bulletin board graphic devices illustrated text magnet board yogic models overhead projector wall poster yogic pictures tape recorder gramophone loudspeaker 
television video cd lcd so through, through using all these aids you can use uh, for uh, like different things like either for uh, showing the sequence yoga sequence or for or for the anatomy or uh, different different things you can use teaching aids so these are the teaching aids that are used and this was the sixth chapter is this chapter clear Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then this is all for today's class. If you have any problem, you can ask. Ma'am, today we'll revise it and day after tomorrow we'll ask. No? Okay, no okay, problem. Okay, no problem. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Please do the prayer. Who will do the ending prayer? Sakshi ji. Yes. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Please sit straight. 